So why is the stock market selling off? What's going on team? It's Ricky with TechBot Solutions. I just finished trading live with the Learn Plan Profit Group. And one of the things that I personally want to talk about is these levels that we are now at with the NASDAQ market. How many of you guys <laughs> woke up during the pre-market session? Well, if you guys can see during the pre-market session or kind of like midnight up until like 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. I'm right now during Mountain Standard Time, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, we were opening up in the green. Overall, NASDAQ market was in the green. Uh, Tesla was in the green. I was just like, yes, finally, after after yesterday's very negative day, I was like, this is great. And then the market has the audacity to pull on back. And this is essentially why I'm making this video once again. And I've made these videos every single time where we approach these overbought levels. We made a video literally right when we were approaching. It's not that anyone can predict the future. Of course not, right? But we can prepare for it. And as we were approaching the SMA line, which has acted as a resistance for the past two months. So when people were asking, Ricky, where are you getting this resistance level? Ricky, why do you think the market's going to pull back? Because it has for the past two months. Until proven otherwise, the market is bearish. What used to act as a support level, the SMA line, and making higher highs and higher lows, is now acting as a resistance level. And it, it, it's so mind boggling to me that people don't prepare for it, that they don't either have enough money left over in their trading accounts or investing accounts, that if the market does pull back, just like it has every single time for the past two months, that they can at least prepare and buy at those lower levels. But no, they buy so heavy, they buy at these very overbought levels, at the resistance levels, and then it gets rejected. And it's like, oh, well, my play is a long-term play. If that's your intention, then 100% all power to you. But if you're swing trading, if you're trying to trade this and you're trying to stay well balanced or you don't want to become an emotional mess and you're freaking out right now, we, we've literally said this in every single video on how to prepare for a market pullback. The market is more bearish. The tech market is more bearish than it is bullish right now for the past two months. If we were, you know, five months ago when the market was consistently bullish and we pulled on back and we we're at this support line, then yeah, I would be like, dude, it makes sense to buy because the track record and the consistency of the market being bullish, making higher highs and higher lows. But we're not there right now. We're at the quite opposite of the end, right? The opposite side of the spectrum. And that's getting rejected off the SMA line, making lower lows and lower highs and just selling off. And if you're someone that freaks out when the market sells off, then we've talked about this. Balancing out your position size, having enough money that you feel motivated, but not so much that you become an emotional mess, right? And also preparing for worst case scenario. You're not in a position where you can try to make it or break it when you're just getting started. You shouldn't be because you have so much to learn. You have so much time and so much to learn. So this is essentially why we've been talking about the resistance levels. We've been making consistent videos, anticipating this pullback. And then guess what? When the market does pull back like this, even with stocks like Tesla, where it did aggressively pull back, now it's up 1%, but it didn't start off this way. It started off with lows of $600, 604 was the overall lows. And guess who bought at 610? Here, I bought 300 shares at 610. How and why? Well, because I saw it to you know begin to consolidate. I didn't know exactly that it was going to begin to push up, but I, I thought it was a good price level. And as soon as the market opened, it began to push up. And during the Learn Plan Profit live trading session, which we go live every single day at market open, we literally, I just sold a portion of my position at these overbought levels. Why would I sell here? Well, based off of previous resistance levels, you know, it makes sense on why it could pull back here. Looking at forward slash NQ, it makes sense on why it could pull back here. So it's not about trying to predict the future, but simply prepare for it. So why would I sell my position? Well, if the market does pull back, I want to make sure that I have enough buying power left over that I can buy at the at those lower levels. I want to take advantage of those good deals and sell them for a profit, even while I have my long term position. I'm still holding a thousand shares of Tesla that I can day trade with an additional thousand shares as well. So that's like you having a $1,000 trading account and being invested with $500. I guess you can't, right? Uh, I guess that's a bad example. Let's say you have $1,200 in your trading account and Tesla selling at $600. Again, it's just an example, but you know, Tesla were to pull back, you have, you know, those five, those 600 shares and you can day trade with the remaining 600. The idea is, is if, Tesla continues to sell off, which it easily can, or whatever tech stock it is that you're paying, paying attention to, Palantir, PTON, Lemonade, Baba, Qcom, GoPro, Shopify, Lulu, everything. Everything's selling off. Even airlines are selling off. Banking's selling off right now. The entire market is selling off. So I need you first to know that the overall market's not against you. It's just 
there's a lot of negative news that's driving the market down right now. And you need to understand that. This is why you need to have an effective position size to tolerate these pullbacks. Because if you become an emotional mess, it, it discourages you. It makes you never want to do this again. And that's simply the position that you put yourself in. So what can you do for your future self to succeed? And that's a very simple question, right? But it's the simple things in life that people tend to overcomplicate because people get very, very confident when the market's in their favor. There's, there's two things that I want to share with you. First thing is on red days, I do to the best of my ability to prepare for green days. And how do I do that? Well, on red days, I try to either, if I find it to be a good deal, is I, I begin to try to, depending on the stock, but I begin to try to load up on that specific stock if it's actually beginning to then now indicate signs of an uptrend. So today started off red. It did during the pre-market session. It began to aggressively sell off. It began to consolidate. So showing some signs of a support and then began to indicate signs of an uptrend. So buying and buying 300 shares at around uh, 610 made sense to me. As it began to indicate signs of an uptrend, am I going to be so confident that, hey, this thing's going back up to $700 a share because $700 is a very common resistance level. I hope that it goes to $700 a share. I hope it goes to $3,000 a share by 2025, just like Kathy Wood said. But guess what? That's not the position that we're experiencing right now. There's, there's you know, current resistance levels that we're going to have to break through first. And when we began to approach 630, why 630? Well, as you guys can see right around 630, once it broke below that specific price point, it began to aggressively sell off. And as we were approaching 630, it began to indicate signs of a resistance level. So I sold a couple shares there. It pulled on back, almost sold more shares here, began to indicate signs of a support, picked right back up. And then once it hit highs of 635, sold another couple shares, right? And, and guess what I'm going to continue to do? I'm going to continue to buy the lows and sell the highs. And the only way that you can do this is by staying well balanced, having enough money available in your trading account or your investing account to take advantage of those lower prices, but not having so much money invested that you become an emotional mess and you just don't want to do it anymore. At the end of the day, there's so many different ways on how to approach the stock market. This is just one of many different ways. All I want to avoid is for all the people that right now feel like absolute trash because why? Because you have no more buying power. You bought at the very overbought levels. I don't know if you bought at 700, 800, whatever the case might be. And it all is because you were too confident that the market had to recover. The market never has to do anything. Do something today that your future self will thank you for. You need to be effective. You need to be well balanced. And you need to make sure that in case an opportunity does present itself, if that means that market pulling back, that you set yourself up for success. And the only way that you can do that is by not being fully invested or overconfident when the market's been bull bearish for the past two months. So I uh, wanted to share my thought process with you guys. Uh, again, the market, again, is still in the very early stages. One of the things that I want to talk about when it comes down to Tesla is, again, still same resistance level right around $700. Uh, it's been getting rejected there for the past month. Right now, we're selling off to $600 a share, and it wouldn't be much of a surprise. Keep a close eye on the overall NASDAQ market. But if the NASDAQ market begins to sell off, breaking below $600 a share would not be much of a surprise. It would not at all. So prepare for the worst and Let's you know, work towards the best. And the only way that we can do that is by staying effective and by not discouraging yourself. So I hope that some of the stuff that we talk about today um, in today's video is something that can get you one step closer to your overall goal. Uh, I'm really looking forward to a lot of these tech stocks right now. Correct, they're not doing the best. They're very oversold and they're very bearish. So that means that it's not about buying the dips super aggressively, but if you view them to be at decent deals and you can tolerate it continuing to sell off because it easily can, the market's bearish right now, so you can't expect it to start recovering right away. Stay well balanced, stay effective, and there's just so many of them right now that it's like a kid at a candy shop. I, I want to begin to just, you know, pick up everything, but we need to be selective and we, we need to make sure that our position sizes are effective and that it can still you know, tolerate pullbacks because the market can easily continue to pull on back. So I appreciate you guys' time. We'll see you tomorrow for tomorrow's live trading session. If you guys want to join us, that's going to be that second link in the description. Don't forget to join our free Facebook group with over 310,000 members. And that's that first link in the description. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy, team.